I turn them on. They're like, nah, man, not today. We off. You know? <laughs> no, man, 57, man. I remember when I was a kid, 57 sounded like so far away. I mean, I remember, you know, just being a kid and, and, and being around my dad and, and, and thinking, okay, if I make it to that old, I'm going to be really old. And he wasn't that old, man. But he, you know, taught me a few things, uh, how to be, uh, I guess you could say, handy. You know, you know how fathers are. They can fix everything with anything. My first car was a 1972 Ford Maverick. Had all the things that a used car had, which was not anything that worked. <laughs> you know, had the mirrors that, uh, you know, not like today, like you young folks, you got a mirror that says, object is closer than it appears. Our mirrors, it was right where it was supposed to be. <laughs> you back up your car now, you'd be like, oh, I got room. Oh, no, no. We knew what was behind us. Uh, my windshield wipers didn't work. They were not intermittent. They were just lazy. I turned them on. Like, no, nah, man, not today. We off. You know. I had the cup holders. You know, the cup holders, the one where you jam one in on the driver's side and jam one in on the passenger side, and they better match colors or you ghetto. You know, that's what we would say. <laughs> you know what I didn't have that all of you had in your first car? I didn't have a gas pedal. <laughs> She's looking at me like, what? <laughs> no, nah, man, the gas pedal broke. The pin popped out. I didn't know about this stuff at the time, but my dad did, and we pushed the car in the driveway. He said, give me 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, he comes out, you are good to go. I get in the car, I start it up, I roll down the window, and I mean roll down the window, and said, thanks, Dad, I love you. Put my foot down, boom, flat, nothing. Roll down the window, hey, Dad, you didn't do anything. He said, well, did you pull the string? Did I do what? Yeah, you gotta pull the string. My dad took a lawnmower string and ran it down and hooked it up. So the only way that I can accelerate is to pull the string. I was like, dude, you gotta be kidding me. You wanna drive the car, you gotta pull the string. And it was awkward at first, but you have to learn your bearings. So I was like, okay, if I get right by here, it's 30. If I get right by here, it's 45. If I get right here, it's 55. If I get behind my back, I'm in trouble, right? So I'm driving around, and I couldn't drive distracted because I had to keep one hand on the wheel and one hand on the string. You know, you can't, you can't hold a phone or anything like that. If I want to take a sip out of my pop, thank God for that cup holder, I just lean over and try to grab the straw with my tongue. And... <laughs> but the best thing was uh, uh, driving, coming to a red light. I look over. They're the police. I knew what I was gonna do. The little voice in my head was like, don't, 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 don't. But you never listen to the little voice, right? Light turned green. I put both my feet up on the dashboard and just They pulled me over, man. They pulled me over. And I just knew I was going to get a ticket. And the, and the policeman came out, and he started walking to the window. And I was shaking, because I was a teenager, right? And I know I'm getting a ticket. I look up. Here's a $20 bill on my face. I was like, what is this? He said, man, that was the best magic trick I've ever seen. <laughs> no, it's nice to be here. And, uh, and, 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 and look, let's just have fun. I think we all have a right to laugh, you know, uh, people get angry and upset about so many things, and sometimes you just need to laugh about things, find a reason to laugh about things. I, I make a joke about race, find a reason to laugh about it, no sense in getting mad, sad, angry, upset, you know, when I talk about race, it's funny to me. <laughs> it is, think about it, if somebody's dark like me, we say black, if somebody's light, we say white. Think about this. This is the two blandest colors in a crayon box. <laughs> That's what we use to describe ourselves, right? Now, I was thinking about this. I was doing a show in Nebraska. <laughs> I 
Hershey, Nebraska. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Population 560. You know you're in a small town when all the businesses begin with the word the. <laughs> I'm driving through, there's the bank, the store, the jail. My gig was at the bar. <laughs> when I walked in, I realized that the town's name was Hershey, but they hadn't seen chocolate before until I showed up. <laughs> but they were nice people. And it was funny because at the end of the show, a lady came up and she said, can I take a picture with you? And I was like, sure. So, you know, she handed somebody her phone and we posed and I put my arm around her. And just when they were getting ready to take the picture, she looked up and said, I've never been this close to a black man before. <laughs> and I looked down and said, I'm not black. <laughs> and she said, what? And that's how they took the picture of her going, <laughs> And so she was like, what do you mean you're black? I said, no, let me tell you something. I'm gonna tell you all what I told her. Just because I'm dark doesn't mean I'm black any more than just because she was light and she white. We all have a true color. Like, like when the government does the census report, every 10 years they ask a bunch of questions. One of the questions is race. The first box to check in that category uh, is for white. Now the second box, my race. They have multiple choices. <laughs> Black, comma, African American, comma, Negro, comma, running back, comma, rapper. <laughs> comma. But they had a little box to write something in. And that write in box is what made me decide to find my true color. Now, how do you do that? Go to a hardware store, go in the paint section, spend some time. <laughs> Grab those little paint chips. <laughs> it took me about 15 minutes, but I found my true color. If you say I'm black, I'm not mad. That's not racist. I'm not offended. I'm just telling you all here in Provo, Utah, I know my true color. I'm a shade of brown called chocolate indulgence. Hello. <laughs> Right. 50 shades of chocolate indulgence, man. <laughs> All you people have been told you're white, you're not white, you're a shade of paint called papaya smoothie. I looked it up. <laughs> <when I was laughs> the store. I know, it's silly, but it's funny. And that's why you gotta find a reason to laugh. So find your true color and then report it to the government. Let them know what color you really are. You might be papaya smoothie, you might be rosy taupe. I don't know. <laughs> but report it. And when they see that we have so many different colors, we're not just black and white like they labeled us, maybe they'll stop asking us what color we are. They'll find some much more important things in the world to solve, okay? Fine. <laughs> yeah. Much more important things in the world to solve, like how to put a muzzle on Justin Bieber. <laughs> baby, baby, baby. I just want to punt him like a football. Just <laughs> I don't know, man. There's so much stuff going on, man. I just I try to focus on family and just try to focus on home. I have an 11-year-old and a 7-year-old at home. Yeah. Thank you. My car is 11, my phone is 7. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I have a 28-year-old son, okay? He'll be 6 next year. 28. He's a man, I know it, because he told me. He did, Dad, 28, I'm a man. And then he did this. I thought he had indigestion, I didn't know what. And it's funny how, uh, you know, he had to announce that. 
and uh, and it made me think that maybe it's time for me to give him some fatherly advice, you know, because when I was growing up, you know, my father gave me advice, the same advice that my grandfather gave him. And by the way, just so you all know, that Sam Adams thing, that is not a stage name, that is a family name. I'm not, not after the beer, the guy on the beer bottle was Sam Adams Light. We are two different guys. <laughs> uh, my dad's name was Sam Adams, my grandfather's name was Sam Adams, I'm Sam Adams. I didn't want my son to be teased about being named Sam Adams. I gave him his own identity, I named him Guinness. Um, <laughs> just to kind of change it up. But, uh, but my grandfather, he's, you know, like, like older people, they like to give advice, right? It's not really advice. It's more like incoherent thoughts. <laughs> but you let them roll with it, you know? Like my grandfather would just say something. Hey, boy, you got a girlfriend? <laughs> nope. Well, what you waiting for? Even the blind squirrel can find the porcupine underneath the Christmas tree. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, man. <laughs> but I'll never forget the advice he gave me that I actually passed on to my son, the 28-year-old man. My grandfather told me this a long time ago. He said, I'm going to tell you the five keys to a healthy, happy life for every man. You write these down. And some of you young guys here tonight, feel free to write these down. The five keys to a healthy, happy life as told to me by Samuel Roosevelt Adams, senior. He said, key number one, find a good woman, you hold on to her. I wrote it down. Your key number two, you find a good job, you hold on to it. I wrote that down. Key number three, you save your money, son. I wrote that down. Key number four, you treat people the way you want to be treated. So I wrote that down. So key number five, if you can help it, don't have kids. <laughs> now I tried to tell your daddy that, hey, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I love that, man, man, I love getting old. I love getting old, man, I'm 57. <laughs> All the young people clapping. You're going to get there, and when you do, oh, my God, I'm 57. And you know how I know I'm getting old? By watching all those daytime television shows. And I have a specific regimen, okay? Every day, Monday through Friday, I watch the same block of shows. I watch The Price is Right. I watch The Young and the Restless. Don't judge me. I watch The Bold and the Beautiful. I watch The Talk. I watch Let's Make a Deal, the same five shows, every day, Monday through Friday. When you watch the same group of shows, really, if you just watch any shows during the day, you see a bunch of commercials, okay? And when you're my age, you notice that those commercials are for dysfunctions and disorders. <laughs> when you're my age, they talking to you. <laughs> you need a pill. You know how you know you need a pill? Because they tell you, you need a pill. <laughs> By the end of the week, I think I got COPD, or maybe it's ED, or maybe it's BPH, I, J, K, element, O, I gotta go P again, because that's what he said. <laughs> Every day, it's a new one. Turn the TV on today. Watching in my hotel room, the guy came on. Do your toes burn when you sneeze? <laughs> No, but my eyes water when I pass gas. Is there a pill for that? <laughs> Every day, man, I shave my head, not to try to be cool. I just wanted to send a message to the hairs that have been growing out of my nostrils and my ears, let them know that I mean business. <laughs> I see some heads nodding like, yeah, man, I know what you mean, man. <laughs> I had a dreadlock coming out of my left ear two weeks ago. That was embarrassing. 
And you know what? If you or you know someone who is dealing with some of those things, the COPDs, the BPHs, or whatever, I would never make fun of those particular things. I'll say the cures, the pills, the names of the pills are mildly hilarious. And you've seen the commercials. Genuvia, Jubilia, Latuda, Lyrica, Flonase. Every time one of those commercials come on and I hear the name, I think, wow, I think I dated her back in high school. <laughs> I keep waiting for them to come on. Are you suffering from chronic back aches? Well, ask your doctor for Laquanda. <laughs> Not asking for Laquanda, she's the reason why my back hurts to begin with. <laughs> so I travel all over. Most of my gigs, though, for some weird reason, are in Nebraska. I am what Wayne Newton is to Las Vegas. That's what I am in Nebraska. They just get up there and they go, he looks like he'll come, and I will. I will go. But that's just the way it is, you know. You go around, you, you, you go and you want to see people's faces. You want to see if they're gonna laugh. You want to see if they're gonna like make stupid <laughs> faces, you know. And they do. <laughs> but you gotta be careful when you're driving. I mean, I'm, I'll never forget, I was in uh, 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 Hay Springs, Nebraska. And if you Google it, be quick, because it's a very small place. Just, <laughs> you'd be like, where'd it go? It was, it was quick. Uh, I got pulled over, Hay Springs, Nebraska. And you know what they ask you when they pull you over. You know why I pulled you over? And a little voice in my head said, just answer the question correctly. <laughs> but I didn't listen to the little voice in my head that day. And I looked at the officer and I said, cause you thought I was Bill Cosby? <laughs> He gave me a written warning, so I guess he liked the answer. <laughs> My mother doesn't like when I tell that story. <laughs> I always feel bad. I always think back to the past. I think back to the past and, 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 and did I, you know, was I, was I a good son and did I disappoint my parents? I can only think of one time that I thoroughly disappointed my parents. See, my dad wanted me to be an athlete. A lot of dads are like that. They want the sons to be athletes. It's natural, I guess. My mom wanted me to be a musician. So between the two, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll do them both proud. So I came home with a tuba. A tuba. <laughs> Actually, it was a sousaphone. You know what I'm talking about, that big old thing? Well, you have to be athletic to carry it. You had to be musically inclined to play it. So I figured they'd be okay with this. They were not okay. My mother was like, I don't know why you got that thing. You're gonna have to feed it and take care of it yourself because I ain't touching it. It's a sousaphone, mama. I don't care what kind of phone it is, you're gonna have to take care of it yourself. And so I had the sousaphone in the house, you know, and, 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 and I was just learning how to play it. And if you've never played a tuba or a sousaphone, it's a process. It starts with learning how to blow into the mouthpiece. And you cannot do it with the rest of the instrument. You just take the mouthpiece and do this. It's like blowing up a bounce house. You just walk around the house for a week. And then they move you up to where you can blow into the instrument. And then you go, oh, I'm good now. <laughs> Once you blow into it, you think you are the bomb. I start playing the Jaws theme. <laughs> You know, I mean, I was having fun with it. I was like, man, I'm gonna be great at this. But in my neighborhood, it didn't matter what you had, 
there were thugs who were going to take it from you. A car, money, sousaphone. <laughs> I'm walking up the street, and the gangster of the neighborhood, Stacy, says, hey, man, give me that tuba. And of course, I was like, it's not a tuba, it's a sousaphone. <laughs> I don't care what kind of phone it is, man. Give it to me. <laughs> and so it's like three guys, Stacy and his two boys, against me. Me. <laughs> and my sousaphone. <laughs> so I took a step back. I was like, you want the sousaphone? I said, give it to me. All right, you want it? I'm going to give it to you. And I just went, Knocked him out with a B-flat. <laughs> he hit the ground, the other two came at me, I just swung into action. <laughs> Sprayed him. <laughs> They're all on the ground, all of a sudden the lady across the street comes out. I've been waiting for somebody to take care of them boys. Thanks, tuba boy. I said, it's a silver phone. <laughs> I have no luck with dating, man. I'm the worst at dating. I, I, I do what the people do now. First of all, by way of applause, married people, clap your hands. It's, it's, uh... <laughs> all right, uh, single people, clap your hands. <laughs> that table. All right, how many people are in a relationship? <laughs> All right, here we go, here we go. So it was like married people, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Single people, that table. <laughs> and then relationship scattered. So I'm gonna speak to the single people. Did you notice when I said relationship, the vast majority of married people didn't clap? <laughs> See, you guys are all looking at me, but I'm looking at you, and I saw a lot of people looking at each other going, well, we stopped relating a long time ago. <laughs> and it's funny because you try to figure out what, you know, from a man's perspective, you try to figure out what women are looking for. And it's hard to do when you're behind a computer. But I think I know one of the big factors, and ladies, y'all can tell me by applause or whatever. Um, I mean, I think one of the keys is ladies want a man who listens. <laughs> so a lot of guys look at me right now like, man, just shut up. <laughs> Nobody asked you to come here and be Dr. Phil. <laughs> You do, you want a man that listens. You want a man who can, you know, so you gotta hear good to listen, right? Is, is that right? You know, you think about that word, hear, H-E-A-R, hear. That word appears in a lot of other words that pertain to love. Think about it. Heart, the symbol of love, H-E-A-R-T, right? Share. S-H-A-R-E. <laughs> Therapy. <laughs> it's there. And this guy's right now, T-H-E, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I do what you do now. I'm, uh, I'm online. I'm on uh, all those websites. I'm on match.com. I'm on plentyoffish.com. I'm on christianmango.com. I'm on farmersonly.com. <laughs> I do a lot of shows in Nebraska. You never know. <laughs> But it's, di it's, it's different, it's funny, man. And first of all, that profile thing, you know, uh, it's like filling out a job application. I just don't want you to check my references. 
you know. Uh, and ladies are so ingy now. I like hiking and biking and camping and fishing and skiing and snorkeling and horse skating. I don't even know what horse skating is. We can't go out. I like eating and sleeping and drinking. Boom. <laughs> One lady put on her profile, she wants a man that makes at least $150,000 a year. That's what she said. I wrote her back. <laughs> I said, girlfriend, times are hard. I need a man that make $150,000 a year. <laughs> Get in line. Yeah, it's an interesting thing, man. It's an interesting thing. But, uh, you know, the thing that we used to do for me growing up, we used to, like, go party. We used to go to a nightclub, dance, meet somebody, you know, and maybe you get to the point where you get a phone number at the end of the night and you walk away, you with bed. You get a number, man? Yeah, I got a number, man. Let me see it. I didn't have to write it down. I remembered it. <laughs> That was always my excuse, man. I didn't need to write it down, I don't remember it. You know, I uh, had my son do this uh, earlier this year when I turned 57. My son said, Dad, I'm gonna take you to Las Vegas so you can show everybody you still got it. I was like, got what, gout? You know? And the funny thing is, he said, Dad, I'm gonna take you to Las Vegas, but I bought the plane tickets. So we go to Las Vegas, and, uh, and, and I don't like Las Vegas. I'm not a gambler. I don't gamble my money. Ever since I found out my sleep number is higher than my credit score, <laughs> I'm gonna... it's okay. You can laugh. <laughs> Look, y'all can laugh. I'll get you back to Vegas in a second, but you can laugh about things. I said it before. You have a right to laugh about things. There's no reason to be sad, bad, angry, upset. If I tell you that my sleep number is higher than my credit score, you can laugh about it. I laugh about stuff all the time, man. I go to places like the Starbucks where people pay crazy amounts of money for a cup of coffee. I live in Colorado. I went to Aspen where the pretty people live. <laughs> and they pay the mountain prices up there. And the lady in front of me ordered a venti non-fat no foam latte. She asked for six pumps of cinnamon. Yeah. <laughs> and it came out to $7.62. And I started laughing. <laughs> Hard. I mean, I was like, <laughs> and she was like, what's so funny? And I was like, you, dummy. About to pay seven dollars and sixty-two cents for a cup of coffee for seven dollars and sixty-two cents. I want the fat. I want the foam. <laughs> you might as well give me six pumps of whiskey for seven dollars and sixty-two cents. <laughs> Laugh about stuff, man. So anyway, so we go to this nightclub, man, and uh, everybody in there was half my age. I knew it. I looked at them, especially the guys. They had on the uniform. The shirts had sparkle and glitter. The jeans were ultra tight. The hair was spiky. They looked like they had just stepped off the set of Jersey Shore. <laughs> they did. They all looked like this guy that was on that show. Y'all remember that show, Jersey Shore? The dumbest show in the history of dumb shows. <laughs> but they had a guy on the show that called himself The Situation. And I think that's the greatest nickname ever. <laughs> My nickname growing up, Butch. I wish when I was 12 years old, back in 1972, I wish I would have walked into the house after school, <clears throat> mom and dad, from now on, you two will address me as the situation. Ten seconds later, my mother would have been on the phone. Hello, 911, we got some situation laid out on the floor. <laughs> oh, I know what happened. My husband, the solution, knocked him out. That's what happened. <laughs> but, 
you know, I'm at this nightclub and, 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 and I'm going to try to blend it. And they're playing songs that I don't know. Look, I still listen to music from the 60s and early 70s. Stevie Wonder, Temptations, Motown, that's where I live. I don't leave. If you ever pull up next to me and I'm driving along. <laughs> You can bet I'm probably listening to Stevie. La, 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 la. I'm listening to my Sherry and more or something. But they don't play that in Vegas. <laughs> they play these songs that I don't know, you know? And I think all of them are new. I heard this one song while we're at the club. My son stood next to me for as long as he could before he realized he was standing next to a square. <laughs> And we're listening to this one song, and maybe some of you all know this song. I didn't know it. I thought it was brand new, and I was trying to be cool, moving to it. And the song went, this is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why, this is why, this is why I'm hot. I'm hot, because I'm fly. You ain't, because you not. This is why my son was like, Dad, that song, 10 years old. Stop moving. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's still stupid. I mean, if he hot, why don't he go inside and turn the air conditioner on? <laughs> all these rap songs all can be solved. They all have problems that could be solved so easy. <laughs> Dude, this is not a problem, man. Some of them are funny to me, though. Some of them are funny, and some of them, like, I, and like okay, now, he's not really a rapper, I don't think, but, uh, like, Bruno Mars. Oh, look, I played it uh. I just say Bruno Mars, and women are like, <laughs> whatever. Ladies love Bruno Mars. You know what? I didn't know what the fuss was about with Bruno Mars a couple of years ago. You know, I, I, he, he came to uh, Denver, and, uh, and I went to the show. And, uh, and I bought a ticket, and it was me and 10,000 women. <laughs> and I get there, and he comes out on stage, and he's a ball of fire. Dun, 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 dun. He's a little dude. He's like four foot two. <laughs> But ladies love them, you know, and they were going crazy, and I'm looking around. I'm like, hey, girl, how you doing? Hey, girl, hey, put those back on. Hey, girl, how you doing? You know? <laughs> and then Bruno slowed it down. I mean, slowed it down. The lights went dim, except for one spotlight was on him, and uh, he starts singing this song that he performed with a rapper named B.O.B. Not Bob. <laughs> B.O.B. <laughs> And, uh, and, but he didn't have B.O.B. with him that night. But Bruno starts singing the song. Beautiful girls all over the world. I could be chasing. And I mean to tell y'all, I started levitating out of my chair. I was like, hey, Bruno. I got home, I was like, how did he get me? <laughs> He's magical. <laughs> but that song is called Nothing On You, and I bring it up because B.O.B., the rapper, like if you ever watched the video, it's like the greatest, to me, he says what I think is the greatest rap line I've ever heard in a rap song. I haven't heard a lot of rap songs, but as far as I'm concerned, this is the greatest line. Like if you ever see the video while Bruno's singing, you see B.O.B. in the background, look like he gonna mess it up. Just, That's that look that says something really vile and vulgar is gonna come out of his mouth. But in the song, he says, baby, you the whole package, plus you pay your taxes. What? <laughs> I don't know what that means. And then he finishes it up. And you keep it real while the mother stay plastic. You my Wonder Woman, call me Mr. Fantastic. Stop. Now think about it. So I thought about it because that's what he instructed me to do. And I did the rewind to that line, you the whole package plus you pay your taxes. Man, they ought to put that in a Hallmark card for Valentine's Day. Man. So these songs are playing, I don't know these songs. And then there was this one song while we're standing there, now, now keep in mind, it's, it's 
just hundreds of people in this little nightclub. And my son, he just went away. He just couldn't take it anymore. His dad's not hip. He's brought me out here to find out that I'm not Vegas worthy. And he leaves. And so I'm standing around, and I notice that they keep playing this one song over and over and over and over again. And I thought this one was new. The song is called Get Lucky. I think the group is Daft Punk. Okay, this is January of this year. I think this song is new. <laughs> After the third, like they played it, like I said, like over and over, like, like 30 times in 10 minutes. So after about the fifth time, I pulled out my phone, I started Googling it, and I'm like, wow, this song won Grammys? This is like a Grammy award-winning song, man. And you know, I could have written that song. <laughs> I should have Grammys. And if you don't know the song, the gist of the song, the, 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 the big line of the song is, she's up all night to the sun. I'm up all night to get some. She's up all night for good fun. I'm up all night to get lucky. 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 I mean, I could have wrote that, okay? I could have written that. I would have wrote it just a little different, you know. My version would have been more like, she's up all night till the sun. I'm up till 10 and I'm done, because I'm an old dude. <laughs> you go chase the sun, I'm going to go home and get some rest, okay? <laughs> I'm there, I'm, on, I'm, I'm standing there, and I don't want to be the wallflower. You know what the wallflower is? The wallflower is that person is standing up against the wall while everybody else is having a good time. I don't want to be that person. So I was looking for somebody to dance with. When I was coming up, men asked women to dance. That was dance etiquette. So I would just go, hey, would you like to dance? And you'd go, mm-mm. And I'd say, fine, I'll find somebody else. And I'd just move on to the next person. That's the way we did it. But ladies, y'all are so aggressive. I'm looking around, I feel a hand tap my shoulder. I turn around, this woman said, my name is Shafrika, you mine. <laughs> and she is literally carrying me onto the dance floor. And I'm like, Shafrika, is that a pill? I think that's a... <laughs> and she parks me on the dance floor and that's when it hit me. I have no moves. I'm 57, I have no moves, except for the one that is built into every man's DNA. There's this one dance move that all men from ages one to 92 have. We all have it, ladies, if you've seen your man do it, men, you've done it, you just didn't know what it was called. It's called the compass, because we're only going east, west, <laughs> north, south. We ain't hurt nobody, we can't get lost. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> That's our move. So I broke into the compass. But Shafrika was not doing the compass. First of all, she turned her back on me. Trouble! When, she, when the lady turns her back on you, fellas, that, it, it game over. And then her body started vibrating and gyrating like gluteus turbulence. Right? You know, it looked like she had swallowed a jackhammer. <laughs> and all of a sudden, she just goes into that twerk and just starts <laughs> And I'm 57, I'm gonna look. I'm like, yeah, okay, uh-huh, look at that though. Yeah, girl, oh, wow, look at that though. But you can only do that for so long before you get inspired. All of a sudden, I start doing steps. I didn't know I had my repertoire. I start doing Beyonce, hey girl. <laughs> she just stayed, you know, she was content. But you can only do that for so long. So after about 10 minutes, I started tapping her on the shoulder. But because she was doing all of this, she couldn't tell that I was tapping her on her shoulder. <laughs> So I was forced to go into emergency mode. I did what I thought was the right thing to do. 
I wrapped my arms around her and tried to stop her. It looked like I was on the back of a motorcycle. I'm just holding on to her. She's like, you like dancing with me? I'm like, no, not really. You're chipping my teeth, please, slow down. I held on for another 35 minutes, man. <laughs> Tore my ACL that night, man. <laughs> I got home, my friends were like, how much did you lose in Vegas? I was like, nine pounds dancing with your freaking, man. I just want to say one last thing to you guys. Um, if you don't remember anything else I said tonight, uh, remember key number four, and that was treat people the way you want to be treated. And just so you know, this is not a political statement. This is just a statement of politeness that my parents and grandparents instilled in me a long, long time ago. I, th I think it's still good in the 21st century. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Hopefully. You want to be treated with kindness and respect. And if that's the way you want to be treated, then treat others that way. And uh, I think if you do that, your world will be a whole lot better. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>